Oh, my name is uh, Jose Maria de la Torre Hernandez. I am the head of interventional cardiology department here in the Hospital Universitario Marques de Valdecilla in Santander, in the north of Spain. Uh, the case corresponded to an 80 years old patient, a male, with uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, ex smoker, previous history of coronary artery disease, an inferior STEMI in 1999, a lot of years uh, back, and he was treated at that time with phrenolysis. The patient did well, and just recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago, he was admitted. He complained of uh, chest pain at rest for 20 minutes, but feeling of discomfort, dyspnea, and chest pain with the exercise in the previous weeks. Uh, an EKG with uh, sinus rhythm, Q wave uh, in inferior leads, ST depression in lateral, uh, troponin was mildly elevated, right? and in the echo, echinacea in the inferior uh, segments, and Ejection fraction was somehow preserved. The angiography showed uh, there was a three vessel disease, chronically occluded RCA, and in the left, a proximal cirque with a 60%, 70% stenosis, distal cirque with a tight 90% stenosis, and in the LAD, the vessel was diffuse disease with calcification, a strong calcification, with uh, an osteal uh, calcified nodule and a sten severe stenosis. And in the mid portion of LED, a lesion that could be also a suspicious 70 75%. The decision in the, initially in the heart team was to think uh, about the possibility of cabbage. The percent. patient and the family was more in favor of PCI. And also, a viability study demonstrated that inferior segments were not viable. So, we have the two uh, branches in the left coronary artery with problems. And uh, we decided to do to this procedure today, assessing the vessels by pressure wire, and we could. Uh, uh, very nicely demonstrate that in the CERC, only the distal lesion was significant. And uh, we fixed this lesion. And the proximal lesion was not significant uh, either before and after the treatment of the distal. Left this lesion alone. Moving to the LED, the pressure wire at the beginning told us that uh, the both lesions, proximal and mid, mid to distal, were significant. And we started with the proximal because the osteo was involved. It was hard because very calcified lesion, but finally we could stand the lesion with uh, I was We could really check the expansion. It was reasonable good, not excellent, because we have some point or spot with more calcification. Aggressive post dilatation, we uh, evaluated the result with IBUS. Expansion was uh, reasonable good, and uh, we reassessed the LED distally, and the other lesion was significant. We knew from the beginning, but and we treated this lesion that was uh, easier because it was not really uh, very calcified. Okay, we were very happy because at the end we interrogated again the vessel, and we get the 0.9 yeah. uh, final result in the LED, taking into account that it's a very diffuse disease. Then we have the three stents implanted, distal cirque, proximal LED, and mid-distal uh, mid LED. And uh, all the procedure was guided by the pressure wire assessment, by IFR, core registration. It was very important to really see where the different uh, state up of the, or drop of the pressure was located and to guide the procedure. And imaging was important also to, um, to guide the stenting, in the, uh, particularly in the LED. Then I think the case is very illustrative. Uh, it's very helpful to learn how to work with dantan lesions and what you can expect uh, with different combinations of severity between both dantan lesions. I think uh, I hope that the case will be pleasant, uh, good for you and you could uh, really take some lessons from it. Thank you. Ooh.